It was a damp Thursday morning on a Greek hillside in May of 2015. Two archaeologists, part of a team from the University of Cincinnati, were excavating an apparently unpromising site close to the world-famous Palace of Nestor. They dug a three-foot hole in the unyielding clay with nothing to show for their labor. And then something entirely unexpected appeared. The unmistakable green of bronze. Was this the start of a significant find? The two archaeologists were Allison Fields and Flint Dibble, members of a team of more than 30 experts from the Ohio-based university led by married couple Sharon Stocker and Jack Davis. Stocker had been exploring this area for 25 years, but in 2015, things hadn't been going swimmingly. The Cincinnati team had originally selected a site in the Nestor Palace area that they believed might yield some interesting finds. But Greek government red tape, worsened by an untimely national lawyer strike, had conspired to render that area out of bounds. Under the circumstances, the team had to choose a different site nearby in an olive grove. Once they'd removed the undergrowth and the snakes, they saw three stones that at least held some promise. Nonetheless, at this stage, they still didn't know if what they were looking at was actually ancient. Such are the trials of archaeologists in the field. But then Dibble and Fields made their find, and as soon as they did, they contacted Stocker and Davis. All of them realized that this bronze object could be something of importance, but little did they know just how significant it was. Speaking to Smithsonian Magazine, Stocker recalled, It was amazing. People have been walking across this field for 3,500 years. At this point, none of the team had a clue as to the riches that would be revealed when they continued their dig for half a year. They found armor, gold and silver vessels, precious stone beads, four gold rings, the list went on. What's more, underneath all these riches lay a complete skeleton. It eventually became apparent that this would be one of the most important archaeological finds for at least 50 years in Greece. And the burial site they'd found was so rich in artifacts that it overwhelmed the Cincinnati archaeologists, leaving them exhausted. For a fortnight, the archaeologists were at the site 15 hours each day. We never imagined that we might find anything more than a few potsherds that could be put together with glue, Stocker told Smithsonian. Suddenly, we were faced with this huge mess. It became clear that we couldn't continue at that pace and we weren't going to finish. There was too much stuff. So the timetable for that year's season was extended. Instead of finishing in midsummer, the team worked on until the end of November. And astonishing find after astonishing find came to light. One exquisite piece found by the side of the skeleton was an ivory plaque inscribed with a griffin. The skeleton, which was that of a man aged in his mid-thirties, was nicknamed the Griffin Warrior. Moreover, the Griffin Warrior's tomb and the 1500 artifacts it contained were now dated to between 1500 and 1450 BC. That meant that the grave had been dug before the neighboring palace of Nestor had been built. And this date, plus the nature of the objects in the grave, posed questions about the accepted time scale of the emergence of the earliest Greek civilization. And when you query the previous consensus of the development of ancient Greece civilization, you're actually posing questions about the foundations of modern Western European culture, which is widely seen as having emerged from ancient Greece. Way back in the Bronze Age, maybe we're already seeing the seeds of a system which ultimately allows for the emergence of democracies, Davis explained to the Smithsonian. Scholars of ancient history have generally believed that the foundations of classical Greek civilization were laid by the Mycenaeans, the people who built the Palace of Nestor. They seem to have appeared without precedent in approximately 1600 BC. This was a crucial time in the development of what would become Western civilization, Stocker explained. But we still know very little about how Mycenaean civilization emerged in Greece. And this griffin warrior grave and its contents have the potential to greatly increase our understanding of how that happened more than 3,500 years ago. Indeed, the history of our changing perception of how Greek civilization arose is a fascinating subject in itself. The Greek writer Homer was the first to record tales of the Mycenae and their battles with the Trojans in his epic poems The Iliad and the Odyssey. These great poetic works were probably written towards the end of the 8th century BC. 
and by the mid 19th century AD scholars believe that Homer's epics were mere myths and that sophisticated Greek civilizations hadn't even existed prior to the 8th century BC however the culturally complex burial site of the Griffin warrior dates from 650 years earlier moreover in the late 19th century a German called Heinrich Schliemann decided to prove that the world Homer described was real and sure enough he found the sites of Troy and the Mycenaean palace of Agamemnon both detailed by Homer Schleiman had shown that Homer's account of ancient Greek history was more than just myth But the apple cart was upset by another discovery this time one made by a British archaeologist in 1900 Arthur Evans discovered the Minoan civilization on the Mediterranean island of Crete Which is now part of modern Greece and accepted wisdom then became that the Minoans predated the Mycenaeans and therefore it was they who should be credited as being the originators of classical Greece what Schleiman had found it was now believed were simply outposts of the Cretan Minoans on the Greek mainland But the tide turned yet again in the 1950s when an ancient Greek script the enigmatic linear B was finally deciphered Now it was again thought that the Mycenaeans could lay claim to being the original Greeks and Until the discovery of the Griffin warrior the accepted wisdom remained that the Mycenaeans had overwhelmed the Minoan civilization on Crete by force of arms Destroying elaborate palaces such as the Knossos Few scholars doubted that the Mycenaeans should be viewed as the real founders of Greek and later European civilization But it's possible that the Griffin grave will give rise to a different view of how we should interpret the relationship between the Mycenaeans and the Minoans The artifacts packed into the warriors grave are in fact a fascinating mix of both cultures the grave shows these are not just knuckle scraping Neanderthal Mycenaeans who were completely bowled over by the very existence of Minoan culture, John Bennett of the British School of Athens told Smithsonian. Davis and Stalker are of the opinion that rather than being in opposition and developing separately, the Cretans and the mainland Greeks were in close contact and developed their advanced culture in partnership. So the discovery of the Griffin Warrior grave in that olive grove has offered an entirely new perspective on the origins of classical Greece and even Western civilization Check out these other videos from let me know if you haven't made the move to subscribe to our channel All you need to do is click on that red subscribe button. Thank you for watching